Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about mole concept. For that, let's have a look at this reaction. What's happening in this reaction? If I were to answer this question, I would usually say that two molecules of hydrogen combine with one molecule of oxygen to give out two molecules of water. Now, if we ask the same question to somebody else, he or she may answer the same question in a completely different manner. For example, he may answer as 4U of hydrogen molecules combined with 32U of oxygen molecules to give out 36U of water molecules. Now these are the two interpretations one can make out of this same chemical reaction. In first interpretation, the number of molecules were con considered and in the second interpretation, the mass of the molecules were considered. Now these are the two ways in which the amount of a substance involved in a chemical reaction can be characterized. That is in terms of number of particles involved and in terms of mass of the substances involved in that particular reaction. So these are the two equally convenient ways to represent the amount of a substance involved in a reaction. And that's the reason why we have a new unit mole introduced which encloses both of these units. That is by saying that we have one mole of a substance, we mean that we have a fixed number of particles in that substance and also we mean a fixed mass of that substance. So it's more convenient to use the unit mole instead of these two units. Now in this video, I'll be basically focusing on one mole in terms of a fixed number of particles and one mole in terms of a fixed mass I'll be dealing it in another video. So let's go ahead. Now for, for understanding this I would like you to have an analogy. It's a common experience for all of us to go to a fruit seller and ask for a dozen of bananas or two. As soon as we ask him for a dozen of bananas, he starts counting 12 bananas and hands it over to us. So here we see that one dozen of bananas represents a fixed number of bananas, that is 12 bananas. In the same way, one mole of any species also represents a fixed number of particles of that particular species. For uh, That is one mole of any species equals 6.022 into 10 power 23 particles of that species. Now, what do I mean by species here? Now, species can be an element, a compound or any kind of compound like an ionic compound. Now, the particles uh, depend upon the kind of species that you have. For example, if I have my species as an element, we know that elements are comprising of same kind of atoms. So our particles here in this case will be atoms that are there in that element. Now suppose my species is a compound. Then the particles for me would be molecules which make up this compound. In the same way if I have my species as an ionic compound which, com which is composed of positive and negative ions. My particles here will be cations and anions. So these are the particles that we can have for these species. Now as I said one mole of any species has a fixed number of particles that is 6.022 into 10 power 23 particles. Now this fixed number of particles is independent of the species that you have. Any species you have it must be having those many number of particles. So this fixed number of particles has got a separate name for itself. And this number is called Avogadro number. Now this name has come from the name of a person that is Amedeo Avogadro who was the discoverer of this concept. Now let's move ahead and look at some examples for a better understanding. Now suppose I have one mole of helium. I know that helium is an element, so it must be having helium atoms. So here my particles are helium atoms and the species that I have is helium. So what do you think, how many number of helium atoms this one mole of helium must be having? 
Yes, it must be having Avogadro number of helium atoms that is 6.022 into 10 power 23 helium atoms. Now suppose my sample is or my species is one mole of oxygen gas. Now oxygen as a gas has oxygen molecules in it which we represent as O2. So we say that here the species that we have is oxygen gas and the particles for us here is oxygen molecule. So what do you think how many oxygen molecules must this one mole of oxygen gas having? It must have Avogadro number of oxygen molecules that is 6.022 into 10 power 23 oxygen molecules in it. And in the same way if we have one mole of sodium ions it means that we have Avogadro number of sodium ions. Also if we have one mole of oxide ions this would essentially mean that we have Avogadro number of oxygen ions that is 6.022 into 10 power 23 oxide ions. Now let's solve a problem. Suppose I have two moles of helium. How many atoms of helium do you think it must be having? Let's find out. Now we know that one mole of helium has 6.022 into 10 power 23 helium atoms and this is called the Avogadro number. Now suppose we want the same, I mean, the amount of particles or the number of particles for two moles of helium. It is as simple as that. We need to multiply two to this Avogadro number and that will give us the answer. So two moles of helium equals one, I mean two into Avogadro number of helium atoms, which equals 12.044 into 10 power 23 atoms of helium. So let's fill in this blank now. That's it. Now, what do you think 3 moles of helium would be having? It must be having 3 multiplied by the Avogadro number of helium atoms, which yields 18.066 into 10 power 23 atoms of helium. So this is how we use this formula that is 1 mole of any species equals Avogadro number of atoms, molecules or ions of that species. So this was all about this formula and I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.